Hi everyone, welcome to my little space here on the internet. Um, if you're new, welcome, thank you for joining us. And if you are returning, welcome back. Really glad to have you here. My name is Anna. I live in Seattle, Washington, and I like to make things. I like to knit and sew and dye and make flowers out of felt. I just like to experiment and try new things and make all sorts of messes, um, but fun messes. So on this, in this space, uh, is where I talk about the things that I'm making, the things that I've worked on, um, and the things that I'm hoping to work on in the future. So today I wanna to talk you through kind of the projects I finished in the month of September, um, projects I've been working on, and then projects that I want to begin working on in the month of October um, and beyond. So I'm also gonna talk you through some knitting related things that I've acquired and have I'm really excited for or am really enjoying. So that's what this video is gonna be all about and that's that's it let's do it um okay so i want to start with projects that i finished in september and some of these you may have seen from last month's video and some of them you have not seen because they are brand new so the first one i want to talk to you about is this lovely sweater um i will stand up and hold it for you so you can see this is the sweater number five by My Favorite Things Knitwear. It is a fisherman's rib sweater, a little bit cropped with really huge, fluffy, voluminous sleeves. Um, I knit this in the smallest size that the pattern comes in and I knit this for my little sister, Julia. So she wanted, she saw a sweater very similar to this on Instagram um, and sent me a picture. I was like, oh, can you make something like this? And I immediately recognized that it was very similar to this pattern by My Favorite Things Knitwear. And I was like, oh yeah, sure, just get the yarn and I'll make it for you. So um, this is just knit with 100% wool. It is just a natural undyed wool. Um, I got it, so I ended up having to do hold two strands of worsted weight yarn. One of the strands is a undyed wool from Ice Yarns, and one of the strands was an undyed wool that I, from a sweater that I took apart, that was like an Irish sweater. So it's made from lovely undyed wool. It's super squishy and warm. The sleeves are huge, <laughs> so voluminous. Um, so it's definitely a statement piece. I think if I was to make it for myself, I would not make the sleeves quite as big because here, I'll hold it up for you again. Like they're very low. This is my armpit here and there's a lot of sleeve um, between where my armpit is and where the sleeve actually ends. Um, but it's really fun. It was super fast to knit. This is knit on the body. The main part is knit on nine millimeter needles. So it goes super fast. Um, I really enjoyed doing the fisherman's rib. There are some short rows in here that I did not find particularly difficult. I think I knit this whole thing in about two weeks and I was away for like five days of that with, without this project with me. So it knit up super quickly. Um, it's really easy to put together. It has some really pretty details like this shoulder stitch it, um, that you do as you're shaping the shoulders. Um, I did a tubular cast on and cast off on all of the hems. Um, I don't think the pattern calls for that, but it's just my preferred method for ribbing. Um, and yeah, it's very warm and delicious. And now that I filmed this video, I can mail it off to my sister so that she can enjoy it this fall. Also, I sewed one of my little tags in there. Um, if you want to know more about these, I will put a link to last month's video. They are from Label Weavers on Etsy. Um, and they just say handmade by Anna Passy Trevino. That's me. Um, and I just think... For one, it shows you which is the back and which is the front of the sweater. And for two, it's just nice to have like a little professional touch. So that is the sweater number five by My Favorite Things Knitwear. Um, so now, now I need to mail that off to my little sister. It was super fun to knit. Um, next finish object um, you have not seen before. <laughs> These are the Broken Rib Mittens. This is a free pattern from Yarnspirations. Um, and I made them with Patton's Classic Wool that I had in my stash um, in this kind of dark gray. I think it's called Dark Gray Mix is the colorway. These, like I said, are a free pattern from Yarnspirations. They're in the Broken Rib Stitch, which I was worried you wouldn't be able to see in this dark 
yarn color, but it's actually really nice. I made the adult small or maybe the adult woman's size because I have kind of small hands. Um, and these also knit up super quick. I made them in like 24 hours. They were really fast and really easy. This is how they fit. They fit really snug. Um, the only thing I wish is that the ribbing was a little bit longer because it kind of pulls up on the side where the thumb is. Um, and I wouldn't mind if it was like a little bit longer, but overall really happy with these. They were very easy to make. The instructions were super easy to follow. The thumb gusset is really nice. Just the way that it's shaped, it fits your hand really well. Um, I made these for in the winter time when I'm biking, I can keep my hands warm. So just two little mittens, super quick, super easy. I think these are pretty beginner friendly, honestly, if you are not quite ready to delve into sweater land, but you want to make something that is a little more involved than a scarf. These are pretty great. Small, quick, worsted weight yarn, so it knits up super fast. And yeah, and they have this pattern like every size. It goes from like child to, I think there's a child size, a teenage size, maybe there's even a baby size. Baby, child, teenager, adult woman, and adult men. I think there are five sizes. So you can make mittens for the whole family. And this used up probably about half of one skein of yarn, so maybe 50 grams or so of the Patton's Classic Wool. So very happy with these. They'll keep my little hands warm and they're very neutral, so they'll go with everything. Ta-da! That's that. Um, this is another project you have not seen before. I knit my very first shawl. So here she is in all of her glory. Um, this is just kind of like a simple shawl pattern that's also free on Ravelry. It's from a blogger whose name I do not remember. Um, but it's just the link on Ravelry is to her blog. I think she calls it the color block shawl um, because in the pattern you can do like any color that you want. Um, you knit it as big or as small as you want. It's super laid back and easy. So I had this, um, this yarn is actually camel hair. So um, if you have not watched any of my videos before, a lot of the yarn that I use is reclaimed from secondhand knitwear. So I will go to a thrift store or an estate sale or something and if there's a sweater there that's of nice quality wool, it's either like wool or cashmere or alpaca or camel. This one is actually one that my mom got, but I will buy it and then take it apart and reuse that yarn in knitwear that I'm more likely to use or that's just more on trend. Um, it's a very economical way to acquire yarn and it also makes me feel like I'm reducing waste. So this was a camel hair sweater that my mom got for me. She's the one that taught me about sweater harvesting um, and she is my enabler in all things sweater harvesting. So she got me this sweater and it was originally a faded sweater. So I think it had this dark solid brown at the bottom, like the cuffs of the arms in the bottom of the sweater and then it would go up and fade it up to the light um, and it was an extra small so it didn't have a ton of yarn i think i ended up with about 450 ish yards of this yarn so not a ton for like a sweater for me so i had this yarn and i wasn't sure what to do with it because it was ombre and i wasn't sure what i was going to make with it so i'd been holding on to it for a little while um and then I think I was just watching some podcasts. It may have been a Fiber Tales podcast or something, and I was just th thinking like, wow, I could, could probably really use a shawl. Because previously I'd kind of been a shawl hater. I was like, I'm not gonna wear that. Like that's like what old ladies wear. I still don't really like lace shawls. I just think they're not really my style. But as the summer has kind of drizzled into the winter, literally drizzled because I live in Seattle and it rains a lot, kind of faded into fall, um, it's gotten a lot colder and I live in an old house that's not really insulated so it gets kind of cold especially in the mornings and while I was working from home I just wanted something that I could wrap myself up in and do meetings that wasn't like a blanket because <laughs> if you wrap yourself up in a, in a blanket that doesn't look super professional on your video conferences but if you have a shawl you can wrap yourself up in it or wear it as a scarf and just keep yourself nice and warm and cozy and i thought that this yarn would be perfect for that because i thought the fade would look really pretty in a shawl so this pattern is knit you basically cast on one stitch and then start from there so you cast on one stitch and then you basically knit across to the no you cast on 
one stitch and then knit across and then knit back and then cast on one stitch and then knit across and knit back. You basically add a stitch every other round. So this long edge that ends up being the top edge is your cast on edge. So every other row you are adding a stitch um, and you just go, 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 go and then bind off when you run out of yarn, which is why it kind of looks, why the, all the dark is down here and then it's really light on this end. Um, I had to do some color management with the yarn and it was a little tricky because the yarn just like kind of faded. It's I think it has four or six plies and the ply, each ply is made up of two plies. Um, and so it starts with all of the plies being this dark brown and then they slowly fade in like a ply of the lighter color all the way until you get to the end. Um, so it's kind of, you can kind of see the jumps in between a little bit, but and I did end up ripping back a couple of times to make the color fade a little bit nicer. But overall, I think it looks really pretty. Um, it's very cozy and very warm. I So I usually either wrap, wrap it around myself like this, so you kind of get both colors and the fade in the back, or I'll do it over one shoulder with kind of the long end this way, or you can either wear, you can also wear it like a triangle scarf kind of. So like this with your little tails and the dark tail kind of blends in. Um, yeah, so it's kind of funky. It's fun, it's very squishy and cozy. I've never knit with camel before, so that was fun. And overall, I'm very pleased with it. It didn't take a ton of time because it is a pretty chunky yarn. I think this is on six millimeter needles, um, but it made a really nice, the fabric's not too dense, but it's also dense enough that like, the wind's not gonna cut right through. And it's all in garter, so you just knit, knit, knit. Um, it was a very fun project and a lovely product. So I'm very pleased with this. I think I knit this in also about two weeks. So um, I'm very happy with it. It was great. And then my other finished object, my last finished object is more like a half, to fini half finished object. Just have one sock. Um, this is just a vanilla sock kind of recipe that I made on the Bellish app. I wanted to try it out. I've been served a lot of ads for it. I just wanted to see what it was all about. So it's a toe up sock, which I had never done before with a short row heel, which I also had never done before. Um, and those are just two techniques that I wanted to try. So yeah, I think it worked out pretty well. I ended up doing three by one rib just to give it a little bit more texture. Um, I did it stockinette in the bottom of the foot and then after the heel turn, the three by one rib all the way around. Um, this yarn is, well, this yellow yarn is 100% wool. It's pretty rustic. Um, and then this, the main color yarn is a 90% wool, 10% silk blend that I had in my stash. It was a harvested yarn. And then I ended up dyeing it this color. So it was originally white. And then just with some acid dye, I kind of did this speckly variegated blue color with a little bit of yellow speckles and some blue speckles and some green. So I'm really happy with how it turned out. I have cast on the second stock. I'm probably about halfway up the toe on the second sock. Um, but I'm really pleased with it. It's really cute and cozy. The only thing is that I cast off just like a normal bind off and it's a little bit too tight. So I need to pull the bind off out and cast off again. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with it. I did a one by one ribbing at the top. I did go down a needle size because my cuffs tend to stretch out if I don't. Um, and yeah, I like that it's ribbed because it will fit me a little bit tighter and it'll be great. So it looks really long, but it's just a lovely little sock that I'm excited to have a pair for. Okay, so those are all my finished objects. As far as works in progress go, I have three. Well, not counting that sock. I don't really count socks as works in progress because I just kind of want to always have a sock on the go to be working on when I'm out and about sneakily behind my laptop in class, things like that. So um, the first work in progress is one that you've seen before. This is my Ranunculus by Midori Hirose. Um, I know I had previously said that I was putting this on in hibernation because I had knit, I think the last time you saw it, I had knit the just the yoke and maybe just barely separated for sleeves. But I decided that I was just gonna 
keep going on it. Um, so I've knit a good chunk of the body. I think I have about nine inches of body. Um, and so I'm also playing serious yarn chicken with this because it is made with this really pretty burgundy silk merino yarn from Ice Yarns. And I had six 25 gram balls of this and that's it. So 150 grams and I'm holding it double. So um, I think each ball is about 200 yards. So I had about 600 yards for this whole project. And the pattern calls for, I think for about 600 yards for a long sleeve ranunculus. And I wanted a wrong, long sleeve ranunculus, but I'm knitting this on a needle size down. I'm knitting on a five millimeter needle just because I wanted the fabric to be a little bit more dense, um, which it is, it's still very light, but it's just a little bit less see-through. I mean, you can kind of see me through it, but it's a little more dense than it would have been if I had done it on a six millimeter needle, which is what the pattern calls for. Um, so my gauge is very different than the pattern. Um, and the pattern as written, it's also a very, very cropped sweater which is not really my jam. So I'm knitting, I need to knit the body a little bit longer than the pattern. And so I don't think I'm gonna have enough yarn for long sleeves. So right now, this is sitting about at my belly button, maybe like the top of my pants, um, if I wear high waisted jeans. So I think I need to go probably three-ish more inches on this. Um, and I had two balls of yarn left. So this is 25 grams caked up that I'm gonna use for the body. And then I split the other 25 gram ball into two to use for the sleeves. So I've stopped working on the body for a little bit and started working on the sleeves. Um, and I've gotten probably about two inches of length on the sleeves. I think I'm just gonna go until I run out. Here's my plan. I'm going to go until I run out on this sleeve. Then I'm going to finish knitting the body to the length that I need. Then I will knit the other sleeve. Then I will use whatever yarn is left over from the body to add a little more length to the sleeve or ribbing or something, and then I will bind it off. So this is definitely a dangerous game that I'm playing here, but it's most important to me that the body be long enough. Um, and then if it ends up being short sleeves, that's okay. Um, Cause it's really lightweight. Um, and if I feel like if it's short sleeves, it'll be a little bit more versatile because I can wear it all year round. I can wear it kind of layered under things in the winter and then in the spring, summer, although it's not really a summery color, I can wear it as a short sleeve. But um, the textured yoke is beautiful. I don't think that I love this pattern as much as everybody else in the world does. I don't know that I would rush to knit another one anytime soon, probably because it's not as fast for me as it's supposed to be because my gauge is so off. Um, but overall it's pretty and I'm excited to have it done so that I can wear it and I love the color and I really like the yarn. So making progress on this, I haven't worked on it in probably like a week or so because I've been working on some other projects that I'm about to show you, but so far so good. I will hopefully have this done by the end of October. I have three sweaters going on right now and I want to cast them all off before I start another one. I don't know if I can control myself enough to do that because I'm really, really excited about the two sweaters coming up that are ne like next in my queue that I want to make. And I also want to make a hat, but I want to try to cast off at least two of these three. And the ranunculus is pretty close to done and this other sweater I'm about to show you is pretty close to done. So fingers crossed, I can do that. The problem is that I have started back to school and I have a lot of work to do this quarter and I'm not going to have as much time to knit. So. We will see what happens, but yeah. So this next one I'm gonna show you, I also have not, I did not, had not started <laughs> when I last filmed. This is my very first test knit. This is the Lupinous pattern by Jewel Coco. Um, and this is what it looks like. It's a really, really pretty color work yoke sweater. This is the first, this is not the first color work sweater I've knitted. This is actually the third color work sweater I've knitted but it's the first color work sweater I am completing and not immediately tearing apart. The first one I made did not gauge swatch. It was way too small. The second one I made, I ended up doing the whole color work yoke, separating for body and sleeves, and then pulling it all out because it was also not great. But I'm very, very happy with this. So 
I've got the yoke done, I've got both of the sleeves done, and I just have the body left to go. And I'm mostly done. I have about four more inches of knitting to do before I finish this. Um, so I'm really close. and I would like to finish this in the next couple of days just to have it off the needles. Um, the test knit is not due until like mid-November, um, but it was a really fun pattern to knit and I enjoyed it enough that I just kind of wanted to go through it. But like the yoke was really fun. Um, there's some really great short row shaping in here. This is probably, honestly, and this is not just because it's a test knit, one of the best written patterns I've ever made. Um, Jules does an incredible job writing her patterns. This is the first one of her patterns I've ever made, but I am, after knitting this, inclined to write another one, or to knit another one, because it's so well written. You do short rows several times, so the fit is beautiful there. Um, and it's just so, like, there's some an interesting technique for picking up for the sleeves that I had never done before that looks really good. Um, like, my armpits really don't have any holes. This is just, like, little tiny holes. Um, so I'm really, really, really pleased with this and would definitely recommend it. I don't know when the pattern's gonna come out, probably in like late November, or early December, but when it does, you should all get it because it's gorgeous. I've seen some really, really pretty color combinations. Um, this is all yarn that I chose and it was all stash yarn. So this brown um, is like a fingering sport weight yarn that used to be gray and I dyed it with tea, black tea. Um, so it makes a really pretty brown color. The pink is a Busilla tapestry yarn that I got secondhand. Um, it's kind of like this mauve pink color. And then the white is that same 90% wool, 10% silk that I have used for a couple pairs of socks. Um, just held double from what I used for the socks. So I'm really pleased with this. I've really enjoyed it. And I'm really excited to wear it because I really like the color combination. I just think it's super pretty. And I'm excited, just excited to have it. I'm excited for it to be done. I'm just knitting around and around and around in circles on the body and that takes forever and it's just like torturous. But I will soon be finished with this and I'm very excited to be done with it because I wanna wear it and it's beautiful. Um, so when the pattern goes live for this, I will let you all know, but in the meantime, go follow Jules on Instagram, buy some of her other patterns and Ravelry, she's the best. Love it. Okay, my last work in progress is a cardigan. This is the very first cardigan I have ever made. It is the Seasons Cardigan by Ozetta Knitwear. Um, and I'm making it in Patton's Classic Wool Merino Worsted. This yarn is discontinued, no longer for sale, but it's not very different from the Patton's Classic Wool that is currently for sale. Super soft and fluffy. This is the natural colorway. It's like a beige color. It's super soft. So lovely. I think it will pill a bit, um, but it's worth it. I don't really care about pilling. You just shave it off and go on your way. Um, but this is the cardigan. It's a fisherman's rib cardigan. I've done a lot of fisherman's rib lately. Um, it's really pretty. You do the collar and button band as you go, so you don't have to pick up stitches for it at the end, which is really nice. I have just, just, just separated for sleeves on this. Um, I really like the raglan detail. Um, and yeah, this is how much I have. I have used one and a half balls of yarn. Um, again, I will probably be playing yarn chicken. I have 500 grams of this yarn and the pattern calls for six. So I may be scrambling to find another ball of it on eBay, but I will worry about that later. Um, my gauge is pretty much spot on and it's coming along swimmingly. It's really pretty. And the reason I chose to do fisherman's, fisherman's rib again after just knitting two sweaters in fisherman's rib <laughs> was kind of tired of it, is because this is knit flat. And in Fisherman's Rib Knit Flat, you do the knit one below purl on the right side and then knit on the wrong side instead of when you do it in the round, you do the knit one below and then purl. I hate purling like most knitters. Um, so yeah, it's very cute. Um, it'll be great when it's done. It's slightly oversized fit, but not 
super oversized so I could I can wear it as a cardigan or probably wear it as just a shirt very versatile very soft very cozy very excited for this I think I will be casting off my lupinous test knit and my ranunculus and then just keep working on this while I cast on something else so those are all my works in progress various stages of sweaters um and I'm really excited about having them all in my wardrobe. So I now want to talk you through a few, a few things that I have purchased. Um, the first thing I will tell you about is actually the cords that I'm using to put my sleeves on hold and the body on hold and random bits of my sweaters on hold. So if like me, you watch a lot of knitting podcasts or you follow Petite Knit on Instagram, you've seen these like plastic, cords that people are using to put their stitches on hold and it's ingenious because you just shove your needle tip into they're like hollow you shove your needle tip into the cord and then just pull your stitches along it's so much easier than putting it on like a cable or on other needles or on waste yarn because it's super easy to slide them on and off um, you can buy like knitting specific ones, but this cord that I have is just like cord from the craft store. I went to Joanne and bought like, it's like for those keychains that you make at like camp when you're a kid. They're hollow plastic kind of rubbery cords. I got a two pack with this clear one and a black one. It's like 60 yards of this tubing for like $3. Um, and I am obsessed with it. I also love that I can use it to try stuff on. So like for this sweater, when I want to try it on, I don't put the whole thing on waste yarn or on cables or whatever to try it on. I just put this cord on the ends of my needles. And then if stitches slip while I'm trying it on, they're caught on the cord instead of just falling off. Um, and it's much less work than like putting the whole thing on waste yarn and then trying it on and putting all the stitches back on. So. I really recommend if you knit a lot of sweaters or projects that you need to put stitches on hold, this is incredible and it has changed my life and I will never be without it again because it's so great. Um, I think that's, oh, I did also, um, I have been very inspired by beautiful stitch markers. A lot of the podcasters that I follow use really beautiful handmade stitch markers. Um, for their projects and I wanted to make some myself. So I ended up at Hobby Lobby the other day and I saw these little kind of faux pearl beads and they already came with a loop on them and everything so I thought they would make beautiful stitch markers. So I bought some jump rings and I just fed the little beads onto the jump rings and now behold I have stitch markers. So I have not used these yet in a project but they're very pretty and I'm excited to use them because I think these are more for like beginning of the round and stuff, not progress keepers or anything because they don't open and close, but you can use them for beginning of the round or raglan or, you know, all sorts of stuff. Just very pretty, very simple, super affordable because all of the jewelry stuff was on sale. So it was a fun little afternoon activity to make my little stitch markers. I feel like I'm talking 400 miles an hour. But anyway, um, I don't remember if I've showed you this yarn or not, but I got at Goodwill a little while back, probably not that long ago, like maybe at the end of August or beginning of September, this purple 100% wool yarn. It's DK by Annabelle Fox, um, which I do not think, I think it's no longer for sale, discontinued, um, but it's from the UK. It's really pretty, just like a royal purple color. This is not usually my color, but actually I really like it. Um, so I may, and I got seven skeins of it, I think, 700 grams. So I have a lot, a lot of this. Um, these are 100 grams. I think I have like between five and 700 grams of this. So I'm not sure if I'm going to make a sweater with it or a shawl or what, but I got that for like $10 at the Goodwill. And then I went to the Goodwill outlet with a good friend of mine and she pulled this out of the, the bins. This is the Zara 100% wool superwash 
merino. I think it's superwash. Yes, it's 100% superwash merino wool. 50 gram balls. Um, it's Italian. And I have this much of it. I think it's about 400 grams. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So yeah, 450 grams or so. Uh, it's not the best color, I will say, but I'm just gonna over dye it. So I have a good amount of like powdered acid dye hanging around. And I'm just thinking I'm gonna dye this a darker green and maybe put some speckles on it. And I actually have a plan for this yarn. I want to make the Wild Mint Tea sweater, which is a new pattern from Drops. It's a free pattern that's in their fall collection. It's like a really pretty kind of, it's kind of like a broken rib texture, but not quite a broken rib. Um, and it just looks really pretty and I'm excited to make it. So yeah, I'm gonna make it with this. This is a DK, maybe even a sport weight yarn. You can kind of see. Um, and it's a superwash, which I don't love superwash, but I also don't hate it. So I think this probably cost me like, again, $5 super affordable and I'm excited to use it. So I got this and then um, there is a craft store that I talked about before, um, kind of close to where I live. It's called Seattle Recreative. It is a creative reuse craft store. So basically people take and donate things there that they like craft supplies that they don't want or use anymore. So they have yarn and they have fabric and they have thread and they have felt and they have paint supplies and they have like any beads and like any craft related thing you could imagine they have at that store and I follow them on Instagram and they posted on their Instagram that they had had like a ton of wool donated or yarn donated um and they just needed to like sell a bunch of it because it was cluttering up their storeroom so they were having a little sale um and basically you could just go and like dig through all the yarn that they had and buy yarn. So I went um, and I wasn't planning on buying anything, but I did. So um, I bought two balls of just plain undyed yarn. I was originally planning to use these in the sweater number five that I made for my little sister, but I did not end up needing them. Um, so this is a 100% wool knitting worsted from Dawn. So I think a vintage yarn. It is 1.1 and a quarter ounces, so 50 grams of this. And it's just like a pure white wool. Um, I really like white wool because I like to dye with colors. So I can experiment on that or just have white. And then I also bought this one with his Worth's Electrica knitting and road making 100% virgin wool. And this is four ounces, so a little over 100 grams. Um, both of them are non-superwash, very rustic, very minimally processed. Um, but I just like to have some plain yarn on hand. You never know when you might need it. So I got that. And then I was so excited when I saw this. It's Clotilope. I'm so excited for this. So I have this sweater that I've been wanting to make for quite a while now from this book. It's called Scandinavian Sweaters by Kristen Viola Odegaard. Um, and it is the Cathedral Dome. It's a colorwork yoke sweater um, and it has these really pretty chevron-y kind of details on the top. And then it also has them on the cuff and you can't really see in this picture, but on the hem as well. Here, you can see here. Um, the motifs that it has on it. It's really pretty. And I wasn't sure what yarn I wanted to use for it because I just didn't know. And then I went to this sale and I found this Plotulopi and I immediately decided that this is what I want to do because I was thinking I wanted to do green and then this is kind of a dark brown. And I saw it there and it just spoke to me. So I had to buy it. Um, if you're not familiar with Plotulopi, Plotilopi is an Icelandic yarn and it is an unspun pencil roving. So if you look at this yarn, it's basically just like a tube of fiber. There's no twist in it. Um, there's nothing really holding it together. Um, but 
It's made from really beautiful, long Icelandic sheep. So when you knit it, um, the fibers hold together and make a really strong and lightweight garment because um, like it's pretty fragile when it's unspun like this. Like you can just kind of pull it apart, but, um, but because the fibers are so long, the stitches will not pull apart once it's knitted up. So it's supposed to be really beautiful, really warm, and really lightweight. And they had like exactly the amount that I needed for my sweater. So there are two 100 gram plates, 100-ish gram plates in here, two more in here. So I have about 400 grams of the main color, and then this green color, and this kind of dark, I'll show you the brown because it's really pretty. Um, this brown has like green flecks in it. It's just like meant to be, you know? And then this is the green. So like they're beautiful together. And then with the cream, like game over. This is like my perfect color palette. So I had to buy it and I'm so excited to make the Cathedral Dome sweater out of it. I'm going to cast this on as soon as I cast off two of the three whips that I have going on right now. Um, I'm just so excited to try this yarn. I've heard nothing but good things about it. And it's beautiful and it's kind of scratchy, a little rustic, but that doesn't really bother me. I'm just so excited. And another reason why I decided to get this and make the sweater out of this was because Plochilope is pretty available and I knew that if I needed to buy more of this yarn, I could. So. There is a yarn store in Seattle that sells Plotulopi, and if I run out of any of these colors, I can go buy more. Whereas if I was just using something that's in my stash, a lot of it you can't go, I, can't, I couldn't go buy more of. So I like having that little sense of security that I'm not gonna run out of yarn in the middle of my project and just be stranded. So yeah, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm just really, really excited to work with that yarn. Like I just want to cast off my other stuff super quickly so that I can start with that. <sighs> yes, and then one more thing that I'm not sure if I've shown you or not. Um, I may have shown you this already, but if not, this is some yarn that I have naturally dyed. Um, so this is 100% alpaca. Well, the label said 100% alpaca, but I'm pretty sure it's not because you can see there are kind of white threads running through it that I'm pretty sure or are either cotton or polyester that did not take the dye. But this is some alp <laughs> alpaca that I had in my stash. Um, and then I have a walnut tree over my driveway and I dyed this lovely little skein. It's like almost exactly 50 grams with the walnuts. There we go. It's like a really pretty orangey brown. It looks more orange in the camera than it does in real life. Um, but it's like a rusty brown color. And I am going to use this to make a hat. There is a free pattern from Espas Tricot. I don't remember off the top of my head what it's called, but I will link it in the down bar below and I will also put a picture of it right here. Um, it's really pretty. It has cabling and everything on it and it just looks gorgeous and it requires 50 grams of fingering weight yarn. So I can use this and I won't have to blend it with any other colors or anything. And I'm very, very excited. So yeah, upcoming projects are the hat, the cathedral dome sweater, and then the mint tea sweater from Drops. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm gonna be working on in October as soon as I finish what I'm already working on. And then after that, I really do need to get started on like Christmas knits and gift knits. I need to make a couple sweaters for nieces and nephews. I need to make some socks. Um, and yeah, I have so many things that I wanna want to knit and just not enough time. So I think that's all that I have to share with you today. Um, I feel like this has been really fast, but I know it's been like 30 minutes because my throat was dry and it's a mess in here. And um, I need to go to, I need to get some schoolwork done because I have started back to school. I'm in the second year of my master's program and it's going to be very, very, very busy this quarter. So I need to get back to that, but thank you all for hanging out with me today and listening to me excitedly talk about yarn things for 45 minutes. Um, I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day and I will see you in a future video.